Chapter 10 is about the gas laws, right? And so as an example introduction, the author chooses a, a helmet, a, a space suit helmet, except in this case, this particular helmet was used by a skydiver who actually broke the world record for skydiving by, by launching from 19.5 miles above. So that's, that's where we already are in space and we have to deal with a vacuum. So the spacesuit had to be in the helmet had to be pressurized, right? And so what exactly does it mean to pressurize a helmet? And uh, we already know what pressure is from the previous chapter. We dealt with that. But that's essentially just the force of the gas particles pressing against the surface. Like here shown in this in the sealed vessel, you've got some sort of particles in there, air particles or whatever gas is inside of it, and depending on the thermal energy that's there, you have either high pressure or low pressure. Right? So you imagine that if you turn crank up the temperature of this this vessel here, that the particles are going to move faster, therefore increasing the pressure of of the particles inside of the flask, right? And and so for kinetic molecular theory, then that just means the higher the temperature, the faster the particles, the higher the pressure. And the same thing, if you cool it down, you're going to have lower pressure, lower kinetic energy, as long as this is, uh, is in the same volume here, right? Because you've got these particles contained in the same volume. And if you remember that you can calculate the energy of these moving particles by with this kinetic formula. Kinetic energy is one half times m times v velocity squared. And so we have, of course, a force, which is in kilograms times meters per second squared. Right? That would be a force, and then you do you have energy times m, right? And so v is meters per second, so that's that's m squared over second squared, and m is the mass in kilograms. Just a reminder, so those those units are again for for joules, all right? So, but pressure is just simply the mass or the force here by these particles pressing on an area, all right? So you have an area here, and so that could be m squared, and then you have a force well, it, that wasn't quite right. So you, you do know that the force here, and it's, it's shown pressure equals force over area. So you've got kilograms times meters per second squared divided by that area over that area here, meters squared, and then uh, one of the... So those are the units for for pressure here, m not meters per second squared. It's it's kilogram per, per meter per second squared, and then... Uh, you have to multiply that by distance in order to get back to to uh, to joules. Anyway, it's mass times acceleration, and so but we measure this. We measure this in um, usually in millimeter mercury, or, or which is the same as tor, or or atmospheres, which is much easier. But the SI units, your kilograms per meter per second squared, we're going to turn that into a pascal. And you can you can use this as a conversion factor. You know that if I ha ask you to convert between atmospheres and uh, and pascals, or, or it's, you can easily do that. Or if I give you the conversion factor of pounds per square inch psi, which may be something you're familiar with, you should most certainly be able to simply do what we've always done since chapter E. If you want to have 132 psi, and you are converting that to millimeter mercury, so 14.7 psi equals 100, 760 millimercury, millimeter mercury, so you multiply by 760 millimeter mercury divided by 14.7 psi, then we can convert that to, uh, this would be 6820 millimeter mercury. And yes, this is referring to actual mercury, as we will see here in a second. Or if I wanted to convert 132 psi to ATM, we can do that as well. 132 psi, we do ATM psi times 1 ATM divided by 14.7 psi would be equal to 8.98 
A T M. So those are simple conversions. You have the conversion factors if you need them. Okay. Here's this just written out. Where does the millimeter mercury come from? Okay, back when you can measure pressure by uh, filling a sealed glass tube here with any substance. Doesn't matter. But this was done with mercury back in the days because it has a high density. And then if you invert that and dip it into a bath of mercury itself, this will of course then not run out. And that's because you have atmospheric pressure, the gas particles of air pressing down on this surface here of mercury, which, uh, uh, which counterattacks, not counterattacks, but, but counteracts against the gravity pulling out the gas tube, gas tube here, right? So you've, you've got gravity that's pushing, pushing down, but you also have pressure. So this works kind of back and forth like a tug of war. And you can calculate the external pressure here, P, by using gravity, which is a constant 9.8 meters per second squared, times the density of the liquid in your tube, times the height. Okay, So this height here, if you have 1 atm, which is normal pressure, this height here happens to be 760 millimeters, which is equivalent. So the 700, if you remember, 760 millimeters mercury, which is a measure of pressure, is equal to 1 atm. And so at, at normal external pressure, this is, uh, you know, it, it fluctuates a little bit, of course, up higher in the mountains. You got thinner air, so this is lower. And then uh, sometimes you have high pressure systems, so this can go up a little bit be above 760, but, but normal pressure is 760 millimeters, so that's 76 centimeters. That's how high it would be. If you replace this liquid, uh, that distance changes. You can actually use water, and then you can calculate that, what distance that would be by replacing the simply the density of the liquid. And then you could have millimeter water or, or millimeter whatever, uh, liquid you desire okay so that's how that works and that's the relationship of that and we we don't have to we have more of more sophisticated instrumentation nowadays to to measure pressure we don't have to use mercury okay we still have some mercury barometers in the and so yeah I didn't mention it but these are called barometers that measure pressure okay and we can also measure the pressure of a gas with a similar system here. We have, again, a sealed gas tube, but instead of having it exposed and dipped into a bath of mercury, we, we simply have it hooked up to a sealed flask. We can fill this with gas. And so then you have, have of course, pressure of acting on, on the mercury, and so so you, again, can just measure simply the height between the two levels here and plug it into this formula. We still have the density of mercury, the regular gravity, times that height that will give you the, the pressure of, of the gas inside. Uh, you can measure air pressure. Now we have an open tube. It's sealed on one end, but now we have air pressure here. All right. So if these two liquids are at the same level, then the external pressure is equal to the gas pressure. Let's say this is 760 millimeter mercury. Okay. So that ATM just means the pressure of the atmosphere, not a unit. So I'm using 760 millimeter mercury here. And in this case, the pressure of the gas, of course, because it's pressed up, is higher. So you would add that height difference to the external pressure. So the pressure of the gas is going to be 805 millimeter mercury. You should be able to read that. And here, of course, since the pressure of, uh, of the air must be the atmospheric pressure must be stronger than the pressure of the gas here, then you subtract. So if you have 760 millimeter mercury minus that 12 here millimeter 
gives you an external pressure of 748 millimeter mercury. So this is how you can, can measure gas pressure. Uh, this is a table from the book that shows you the different pressure conversions. We've already looked at Pascal's and, and PSI, TOR. We've basically looked at uh, most of these here. ATM, uh, ATM is going to be uh, very important. That's going to be what we're using for the most part when we look at gas measurements and gas loss. And uh, just because we haven't done enough, let's let's do let's do a few more here. The pressure in an evacuated vessel is 150 torr. Calculate the pressure in atmospheres and pascals. So we go from torr here to to pascals. And uh, and so anyway, it's, it's we have 150 torr times 101.325 pascals divided by uh, 760 tor. Tor goes away and we get 20,000 pascals, right? I'm just getting these conversion factors from here, right? So here we have pascals to tor and the other one we are looking at is ATM to uh, tor so there you go 1 to 760 so if I use that I have 150 tor times 1 ATM divided by 760 tor and that gives me 0 0.20 torricelli tor okay Okay, I forgot to uh, make a separate slide, but uh, who cares? Here we go. Now we're going to look into the gas loss, right? So not only pressure is needed when we are measuring gases. Of course, we need to know how much there is, right? How many moles, for example, that we can use as, as M. We already know pressure is important. Pressure affects how... Uh, kinetic energy and it is, needs to be measured for gases and now of course gases also occupy volume so we have volume right so you imagine that uh, if you look at the pressure to volume relationship you can you can make some predictions there but it's not as simple because there's also temperature that affects that right and so you you can't simply say that if I increase the volume that you're going to decrease the pressure that may be logical but that only works if you actually keep the temperature constant right because the co temperature also affects pressure and volume right if you if you heat up something it's going to expand so if you heat up something but you decrease the pressure it may not be expanding so in order to look at just two variables uh, out of the four you have to keep two of them constant so here in this case we keep the temperature and the number of moles of course how much we have uh, the quantity of it, it constant, then we can look at a direct relationship of pressure and, and volume. And we find that it's inversely proportional, which makes sense. Now we can follow this logic, right? If you increase the volume, you are spreading out the particles, therefore decreasing the pressure. Or if you're increasing the pressure, you're going to contract this whole thing, right? You put pressure onto something that's going to collapse or, or shrink. And so this, this relationship is inversely proportional. And we can actually come up with a law based on that and, and do some calculations. And keep in mind, again, that n number of moles and temperature has to here maintain constant. This is just an illustration of what, what we're uh, talking about here. So if you have a force of one kilogram pressing on the cylinder here, on this piston, whatever, you have a volume of one liter inside of this vessel of these green chlorine atoms let's say or molecules and you have a pressure of of one to one so that that relationship uh, one liter times one atm equals a constant okay and so that's one times one equals one liter times atmosphere happens to be the constant in this case so if you double the force and you shrink that in half it's still going to be equal to to that constant right so you have 0 0.5 liters now 
if you decrease the volume by half, you are going to increase the volume at uh, the the uh, pressure by by double, right? So you have two a TM. So these are both equal to a constant, and as you can see, 0.5 times 2 equals 1, 1 times 1 equals to 1, just, just to nicely illustrate that. This is just another example of what's happening here. Here we have a, uh, a pressure measuring device, and let's just say that our external pressure is 760 millimeter mercury. Although it doesn't really matter what what if the external pressure for these three different scenarios here uh, stays the same. Actually, it does matter. So, well, it 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 doesn't. But let's just make it 760 here, right? So here are the two the two levels. So the external pressure is going to be equal to the pressure inside. So we have whatever the pressure inside is 760 millimeter mercury and have a volume of 100. So what's happening here is now you are doubling the pressure, right? This means that in addition to the 760, so you've doubled the pressure, which means you cut your volume in half, right? So you went to you went to an external pressure of 1,520. Now you're doubling that pressure again, or in, you have a total of triple, right? So now your total pressure here is... 2,280 millimeter mercury here, and that you cut your volume by one third here, right? So you've got you go went from 100 to 50 to 33 millimeters. So, okay. So let's make a formula out of this. As we already established, the product of volume times pressure equals a constant. And so we can come up with this formula here, P1V1 equals P2V2, or F as in final or two, whichever you prefer. That becomes a formula that you can, you can use, where you can determine if I have, let's say if I have, well, you can determine exactly what we showed. We have if we if we increase the volume, what happens to your pressure as long as temperature and the amount is kept constant. So we can use that formula. For example, here, right, the volume of a vessel is 2.75 liters and has a pressure of 1.5 atm. So that's your condition number one. What is the pressure if the volume is to increase to 5 liters. So we are solving for PF. So PF is going to be equal to P1V1 over, let's make sure it's VF, and I plug it all in here, all right? So we have uh, 1.5 ATM times 2.75 liters divided by the final volume, which is 5 liters. 5.00L and please if you do this write your units down it really helps you cancel out liters your units are an ATM and so in this case your answer is 0 0.83 ATM so this becomes the empirical gas law okay right so this just worked out nicely here Looking at two other variables now, we're going to keep pressure constant now, and of course the amount of gas, and see what happens between volume and temperature. And again, that's pretty intuitive here, right? That if you increase the temperature, you should see an expansion of the gas, right? So this is a proportional relationship this time, right? So here, if you're dipping a balloon that's sealed with a known amount of gas, if you dip it into ice water, it's going to shrink, right? Your kinetics, your, your movement slows down, therefore your volume slows down. Your temperature is going to slow down the movement. Your kinetic molecular theory dictates that. And then if you dip this same balloon with the same amount of gas into boiling water, it's going to pick up speed. The molecules are going to move faster and you're going to see an increase in temperature which will then expand the the volume so it's pretty intuitive right so this is called Charles law the other one was Boyle's law 
Charles law relates volume and temperature as pressure and the amount of gas are kept constant and so you get this V is proportional to T and your formula then is the volume temperature ratio equals a constant and so we arrive at another empirical gas law Charles law V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2 and uh, if I was to work a problem here, a balloon at 20 degrees Celsius has a volume of 2.5 liters. So we have conditions number one. What will its volume be if, so we're going to solve for Vf. So Vf is going to be V1 over T1 times T2 or Tf. And the only other problem here is that we must always, you can use liters here, or milliliters, or even gallons. You don't have to worry about converting it. But temperature is always going to have to be converted, right? Because it has to be in Kelvin. And the reason for that is you can still have gases at negative 12 degrees Celsius. You, you don't have negative a temperature that you don't have a negative uh, a volume there you can't have a negative volume you must have a positive scale and the only positive scale is that of Kelvin of course Kelvin has an absolute zero so in theory at absolute zero the the kinetic molecular theory dictates that nothing moves right and so that's pretty much impossible to achieve, achieve some things always vibrate so we always have some sort of motion so we always have some sort of temperature but in theory if nothing moves you have zero degrees Kelvin but it's important that we convert any temperature that's given to Kelvin and that's easily done by adding degrees Celsius to 273.15 and so if we get the uh, here the volume one is 2.5 liters and that matches the 20 degrees Celsius you take that 20 okay of course that's a uh, uh, V1 here right that goes on the bottom so that's going to be 270 sorry that's plus 20 so 93 and uh, uh, of course this is VF here and that would be the final temperature 37 that's going to be 310 Kelvin and our answer is 2.6 liters. Okay, so here it is all worked out. And when we come back, we're going to put the Boyle's Law and Charles Law together and look at the uh, combined gas law.